Hey, it's Crafty here. Good to see you. I'm going to talk about some next level steps for playing bass. Are you ready for your next level steps? Let's do it. Okay, so before I get into the specific steps, I should say that if you're not really sure if you're a beginner or beyond beginner, that you should watch my other video, which is basically giving you all of the steps that you need to take learning the bass before you can move on to the post beginner stage, which is what we're talking about now. So let's get right into it. All right, so you may have noticed that I just did a little bit of slapping there. Basic slap technique is pretty basic and easy and you can go a lot faster and a lot more complicated with it, but it's basically just this and this. A little bit that too, but that, that, this is basic, right? So you just need two fingers, your thumb and your first finger and the thumb. You just need this area right there to just slap or otherwise it's called thump each string. that right and then with your first finger you pluck either one of those uh, okay I guess we can use the uh, second finger as well like that so there you go check out some slap slap at the bass mama Slapping the bass, man. Slapping that bass, man. All right, next on this checklist is, can you separate the bass from the guitar? Are you a bass player that thinks, ah, oh, no worries, I know how to play Smoke on the Water. That is a really good version of what the guitarist does, except it's not the bass line. So this is the actual bass line. Here's the riff. See, it's different. So making sure that you can identify that the two don't always do exactly the same thing. On to the next thing. Okay, so yet another next level step for bass is knowing that you can tune the strings to other notes. For instance, you can go to drop D. And there's some really good bass lines that you need to be in drop D in order for it to be able to sound right. Okay, so with knowing that there's different tunings, it's also good to know that there's other basses that sometimes have five, sometimes even more strings. So yes, you can actually have a six string bass, but uh, I've just got this five string bass here. And so what that means is there's a lower B string. Okay, so here's a bass line played by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's a song called Righteous and the Wicked. It uses the low B. It's interesting because this point here, right, that on this bass would be the lowest possible note. So it just keeps going down and down and down. So yeah, check out a five string bass. Okay, this video is called the next level steps for bass, right? So if you don't know any of the notes on the fretboard, well then this is the most clearest in my mind way of getting to the next level, learning the notes, all right? Knowing that, okay, here's an F, but here's also an F. Here's also an F. If you need an access an F, bam, then you can do it. And in knowing the notes, you'll be able to see a lot clearer that there's patterns around, which just does make it quite a lot easier. But yes, it does take quite a long time to learn and get it to be that sort of instantaneous. So what are you waiting for? Go practice your notes. All right, so next on our list is reading chord charts. Do you have any idea what that is? It's basically just a chart that's got the chords written down. And if it's a song where it's kind of complex, where it changes around quite a bit, 
well then you'd probably need a chart to follow along. So if you haven't looked at any chord charts, well then I would suggest that you have a look because it's just going to make learning complex songs quite a lot easier and it's also a really good way of being able to play a song right now. It'll give you all of the information that you need. If you can sight read, then it would be very beneficial to your bass playing. So check them out. Have you ever practiced standing up? <clears throat> I'm missing something, aren't I? I need the strap in order to be able to practice standing up effectively. If I'm going to be playing on a stage or in a rehearsal room with other people standing up as well, well then it's probably a good idea that I'm comfortable doing that. I would assume that you're comfortable sitting down and playing, except if you're like my mate from high school who'd only ever played standing up, he said, wow, I just found it so weird sitting down. <laughs> I find that really weird because for me, I probably play sitting down more than I do on like on a stage or somewhere where I need to be standing up. But thankfully I've played enough gigs now where it's pretty comfortable. So if you're uncomfortable doing it, well then give it some practice. Here's a bit of a philosophy where it's really important that you don't only limit yourself to playing songs that you like. Wow, what the hell is he saying? He wants me to learn something I don't like. I don't want you to torture yourself, but what I do want you to do is to open your minds, open your ears, open your hearts to some other types of music because it'll give you a bunch of different techniques, it'll give you a bunch of different rhythms, areas on the fretboard perhaps that you've never played before, which then you can incorporate all of those good techniques and good bassisms into stuff that you do like. So even if you, all you do is you just listen to a bunch of different types of music before you actually tackle the bass, that would be a really good first step. So check out some other genres. All right, this is probably where getting to your next level bass playing is really important that you understand consciously why you want to learn this skill. Do you have any goals? Do you have any future aspirations for your bass? I'm on my way from misery to happiness to be. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. There's probably going to be a ton of times where you're sitting down and you're trying to learn something that's really hard. And when it gets to that point, you just... Uh, you need to have that that fire within you that will give you that, uh, all right, I'll either keep working on this now or I'll come back to it after a break or whatever, as opposed to going, ah, that's it, it's, it's all too hard. So being really conscious about what you want for your bass playing is something really important. And if I suggested that you write it down and perhaps put it up in your room or on your fridge or somewhere, where you can see it, perhaps just in your bass case. So every time you, you take your bass out, you see, ah, yeah, these are the reasons why I wanna play bass. It's gonna be much more of a stronger step-by-step -step process to you improving. So get on it. Okay, so I hinted about this when I was talking about practicing standing up, is do you ever play alongside other human beings? I'm Bill S. Preston, Esquire. And I'm Ted Theodore Logan. If you only ever play by yourself, then you're missing out on some awesome magic that happens between humans, that you playing with either another recording or just playing just only by yourself can't give you. So call up some mates and get playing with other people. Now, whether or not you're playing with other people or not, I would suggest that you do some form of performing. There's some spark that happens when there's other people in the room when you're playing. Something happens. It's, it's more often than not, it's actually a really good thing. Sometimes it might be a little bit too much. And look, I get that. I have many nervous, nerve wracking experiences in my past. But what I really appreciate is that when an audience can give me something, whatever it is that I wouldn't have had, had they not been there. So for instance, a good step to take if you've never done any performing is just play in front of a friend or a family member. Do it! Tough kids! Z kids! Even kids with chicken pot! Love, love hot dogs! I'm hot dogs! dogs. The dogs! Kids love to fight! 
Or, hey, you could, if you have a pet, you could even pretend that the pet is someone in an audience and just play to the pet. Sounds a bit weird, but give it a go because, like I said, there's a spark. There's something that happens when there's other people in the room. So do some performing. And just a quick little plug for my open mic. If you are in the South Australia area, well, then check out my Crafty Music Man pages on either Facebook or Instagram. It's got the details for every time that I run an open mic slash jam night, which is pretty regularly. So that's probably the best way of getting a bit of performance on like an actual stage in front of an actual audience before you're ready for like a big actual gig. So check it out, Crafty Music Man. Okay, we're getting through this next level steps for bass list ever so awesomely. And next on the checklist is one of the most important things. Do you ever record yourself? Do you ever listen back to you playing bass when you're not doing it at the exact same time that you're doing it? Because something's different. You know, you, you, your brain is really concentrating quite a lot on the art of playing the bass. And executing that takes up a lot of brain power. So if you can just get a snapshot, an oral snapshot of you playing, and then just can sit back and listen back to it, it's the best representation of exactly what you're sounding like. If you haven't uh, done any recording, then look, phones have got voice memo sound recorders. Just, just do it on that even. My first way that I started was with a cassette player. Uh, the good old days. Disco Duck and Fleetwood Mac. Coming out of my A track. Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson still was black. black. Those, Those were the days. But yeah, so phone recording, just anything. Listen back to yourself and keep on doing it because you only just keep getting better and better. So on to the next thing. Here we go. Okay, in your bass playing so far, have you only done analyzing? Have you only learnt songs that have been written? Have you ever done any creating? I'm just gonna create something right now, okay? I don't know if it's gonna sound any good. Here's one way that I could create if I think, ah, oh, but I don't know what to do. I can just give myself some numbers. And I don't know why I'm thinking of it, but I'm thinking of 11 and 12. So I'm just gonna create some notes in the 11th and 12th frets and Sort of see what happens. that was it was kind of weird i would probably need to go back over it and go oh okay maybe i'll just use some parts of that and then voila i've got myself like a bit of a baseline an idea of something else to go on with that so if you've never done any creating of any kind well then if nothing else just give yourself some numbers and just sort of see what it sounds like keep playing it over and over and over again until you go Actually, that sounds all right. And just like the last thing on the checklist, record yourself doing it. You lose a bunch of amazing gold if you don't record. So record and be creative. All right, we're nearly there. Couple more to go. Second to last is how often do you practice? If you're only practicing every so often, well then I gotta tell you, that's not the best way to be able to keep moving up and up and up with your bass playing. Perhaps you could give yourself some sort of regular time to make it sort of a habit. If you're feeling like, oh God, he's suggesting I do so much work, well then just start it one minute a day and then see what happens. And so that's a great segue into our very last item on the checklist, which is do you have yourself a tutor, a one-on-one -on -one teacher, coach that can give you exactly what you need tailored to your needs to help you along your journey in the best way possible. I for one have taught myself a lot of things over the years but if I only ever taught myself I would be a small percentage of the ability that I have to offer today. The one-on-one -on -one teacher can just give you, like I said before, exactly what you need. So I'd be looking into getting a teacher in your area, somewhere close by, or be like what I used to do. I used to catch a train. It used to take me an hour to get into the city. I live nearly an hour out. And it was it was actually a great experience. So sometimes I used to practice on the way there and warm up and then kind of think and evaluate about what I did in my lesson on the way back. So get yourself a teacher. That's a great segue for me to be able to just announce right now that I'm organizing a bunch of one-on-one -on -one and group sessions 
just via a video call. Uh, I've got a lot of information on the subject, so just check it out in the description below. But if you have any questions about this, well then private message me and then I'll let you know. Okay, we made it through that whole list. I can't believe that I'm still breathing through it all. Whew. That's a lot. So did I forget anything? If I forgot something, if there was something that you th reckon would be great for this list, then let me know in the comments below. Okay, very last thing just before I go is I have a free ebook download for you. I'm giving it to you for free. It's awesome. It's called the Actually How Good Are You ebook. Perhaps I could have worked on the title a lot more. But really, let's think about it. We all have our own goals. We have our own musical journey that we're on. And sooner or later, we're going to have to have that brutal self-analysis, the critique to figure out where am I actually at? in my journey and where do I want to go and in this ebook I've got the methods for you to take in order for you to be able to take the right action steps in order to be able to figure all of this out and have a really clearer path to go down so download it it's free <laughs> and I, I really hope you enjoyed the video it's been it's been good <coughs> hanging out on this bass guitar here cuz I don't get to play bass very often so it's it's been really fun I'll see you in another video coming up really soon. See you soon.